Physical science time. Let's talk about transfers of thermal energy. Transfers of thermal energy. So we have uh, three different ideas that we're going to talk about when we talk about thermal energy. The first is let's talk about thermal energy itself. So thermal energy. What's the word mean? Heat. Yeah, relating to heat. Right? If you were to wear something called... Oh! Did it go in? Yeah. Nice. Did anyone see that besides just Wade? I didn't okay, I, heard it. I threw the... Let me hold on, I'm going to pause this. Oh, that was too... The marker bounced off the chair and went in the trash can. Okay, anyway, so thermal, thermal the word means if you were wearing your uh, thermal underwear, right, they're, they're underwear that keep the heat in, right? So thermal means relating to heat. In fact, the Greek word thermos, which is also, uh, you know what a thermos is. The Greek word thermos means heat. Um, there's, a, there's a town, I almost said city, there's a town in Wyoming called Thermopolis, Wyoming, and Thermopolis means city of heat, right? And what, what happens in Thermopolis? What's exciting about Thermopolis? It's hot. There's hot springs. No, it's not hot. Like, the climate isn't hot, but there's hot springs where steam is always coming out of the ground. It's pretty exciting. Anyway, is that why hot anyway. springs is called hot springs? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so thermal energy is energy something has. Let's write this. Energy something has due to... Fill in this blank for me. I just want to hear some ideas. I'm going to fill in with something friction. different. Maybe, yes. Yeah, so we know that friction reaction. does generate thermal energy. Some kind of chemical reactions can generate thermal like energy. What else? Uh, what, could, what, what would be a very reasonable and broad term thing to put in here? Energy something has pressure. due to... Pressure. Yeah, due to its heat. Right? Due to its heat. The reason we're not going to write exactly that is because one of the next things we're going to write is what heat is. Um, but this, what, what's happening, we talked about this last year, and people like generally know this, what's happening on the atomic or molecular level for this to exist? They're going kind of fast. They being what? The molecules. Yeah. Energy something has due to the motion and position. Motion being what kind of energy? Okay. And position being what kind of energy? Potential. Potential. Due to the motion and position of its, well, let's put particles, because not everything is, everything is made of atoms, but the easiest way to describe the stuff that something is made of is not always atoms. For instance, um, the air is made of nitrogen and oxygen primarily, and those two are both molecules, and we'll talk about that um, in several chapters, but anyway, because of its particles. So everything, everything is made of particles, right? You might put that as a little side note. That's part of what we call the kinetic molecular theory of matter. Um, which we'll do later, and we did last year, but once again, the kinetic molecular theory of matter, some of the proponents of it are, or sorry, components of it are that all matter is made of particles, the particles are in constant random motion, and then the particles bounce off of each other in the walls of their container. That's a different topic, but it relates to this, right? Thermal energy is the energy something has due to the motion and position of its particles. So even if something to us looks completely still, right? Even if something else looks completely still, it still has energy. And the energy it has is because of the particles, which are always doing what? Moving. They're always moving. Okay? Another thing, so we have thermal energy, right? Another thing we need to talk about is temperature. Temperature? Temperature. I just sounded, I spelled it like that so I could sound it out. I'm sorry, I said it like that so I could sound it out when I was spelling it. Okay, temperature. So, how could we accurately differentiate between thermal energy and temperature? Okay. We could say we could say in amount. Um, what? I'm trying to think of another example of something like this. Uh, it's kind of like what's the difference between some? It's not exactly like this, but it's kind of like the difference between someone's height and how many feet tall they are, right? There's a, there's a subtle difference there where one is talking about a, a physical property of that person and another is talking about the units that that is measured in. This is kind of like the second one where you, this is specifically a measurement of the thermal, let's put this, of the average thermal energy of the guess. 
Particles. Particles, sure. A measurement of the average thermal energy of the particles. So I'm going to underline two things here. Okay, so first of all, it's a measurement, right? So we can almost kind of think of like temperature is just what we call the measurement of thermal energy. When we measure thermal energy, that's called temperature. But there's another part here also, which is that it's the average thermal energy. So um, the thing about when we talk about averages, that I lots of times relate this to your scores. If when we think about our test scores, the last test I handed back. Um, we think about the last test score I handed back, the average on that test was about a 73%, right? That's not, I mean, that's not awful, but it's an average, right? Does that mean that every single person who took the test got a 73%? Of course not, right? Some people had a much higher score than that. Some people had a much, much lower score than that. And it's the same thing with temperature. So when we say it's the average thermal energy of the particles, it doesn't mean that all those particles have the same motion and position, right? It means that on average, the motion and position of these position of these particles has a certain thermal energy. So if we look at what something's made of, right, the particles moving around and how far apart they are, they aren't all the same distance apart, and some of them are moving much faster. I'm going to draw the ones that are moving fast as little lines, and some of them are moving much slower. They all have basically a random velocity. On average, they have a set velocity, but, but each one individually does not have to have anywhere near that average. They just average out to be the same, right? And there's lots of ways that we could get to the same average, right? We could have a lot of them moving very fast and a lot of them moving very slow, or we could have all of them moving at a very similar speed, right? The average is just what we call the temperature, okay? Do you have questions about that? Yes, Kyler. Not about that, but I do have a question. What's the question? It makes me feel stupid, but no. like with my hot tub, we'll, we have it set at like 102, I think. 102 yeah, what? Maybe, maybe even degrees. Degrees what? Okay, good. But it may be even lower than that. I don't even know. Okay. Whatever my dad feels comfortable with. But when we get in, we want it to like the top, which is 105. Yes. And so then we have to turn the jets on to do that. Is that because it creates more thermal energy? Okay, that's a, okay. so I think what you're getting at is that by having the jets on in the hot tub, does that, the jet moving the particles fast, does that make it hotter? And the answer is not really, like, so I, this relates to a question that I read one time online, which was like, if I have a cup of tea, right, and I stir the cup of tea, how much stirring would I have to do to make it so that the cooling down it does by being in the atmosphere is warmed up by how much I'm making the particles move by doing this? And effectively, effectively, the answer is none. Like anything that you're physically moving more or less doesn't affect how fast the particles are moving in their temperature at all. Um, I would guess that probably, for to specifically answer your question about the jets, the jets mix the water better and so the it's not like the hot tub is all a heater there's one specific spot where the heater is or where the water is getting hot and when you turn the jets on it mixes the water better so it all evens out more quickly would be my guess yes wait so why is it that whatever the question, question like a rocket or something like that is going into the earth's atmosphere it gets right hot okay we'll talk about that um that's something called adiabatic heating which she talked about a little in the video but we'll talk about that again when we get to pressure and temperature in chapter 14 i think no, maybe 17. I can't, I can't remember what chapter it is, but um, basically that has more to do with air pressure than it does with actually what's going on with the particles. We'll talk about this again then, but that's a good question too, but we're not going to talk about it right now. So we have thermal energy, which is the energy something has because of its particles, temperature, which is what we call the measurement of that, and then we also have a different concept called heat. And the reason I didn't want to have thermal energy as the energy something has because of its heat is because heat is a separate and different thing. You might remember from the video, or maybe from last year when I talked to you about it, but what it, what do we, what's heat specifically? You probably even have it in your little notes from the video. Heat is what we call thermal energy. Sorry, say it again. The flow of thermal energy. The flow of thermal energy. And so this is, this is another. All three of these are kind of only subtle differences, right? They all talk about the same concept, which is that things have what we might on our daily life called heat, what Antoine Lavoisier, the chemist from the 18th century, called calorique. But this is, uh, but heat is just what, it's specifically the flow of thermal energy. So, so how does energy flow? How does thermal energy, really, how does any kind of energy flow? Forward. Um, at, at any direction. Always. Yeah, from, on, once again, this is on average, but always from warm to cold. Yeah. 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 Yeah
too cool. On average, there's always going to be some heat flowing the reverse direction, but on average, there's more thermal energy flowing from warm to cool, right? So when we feel something as a warm object, it's because that warm object is transmitting thermal energy to us. The, the thermal energy is flowing from that warm object to us, and we feel that warmth as heat. So what would cold be? Is cold a thing? Yeah. No, not well. I mean, not really. Cold is an idea, I mean, but it's, it's but cold. thermal energy is the is is what we call the motion of the particles. So could we call cold the what? The, the slow. Motion. Yeah, the 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 absence of motion of the particles. Right? The slower they're moving, the colder the object is. Cold doesn't really. Nitrogen. Heat is the flow of thermal energy, right? And so when when heat is flowing from something else to our fingers, we can almost think of heat as like how we sense thermal energy. When we when we it doesn't have to be your fingers. So when we think of uh, feeling the flow of thermal energy from something to you, that feels hot. The other way around, if, if thermal energy is flowing from you to something else, that feels cold, right? So basically, it's kind of like what she was saying about equilibrium. Everything in the universe eventually reaches thermodynamic equilibrium, where it will in the near, very, very, very distant future. Um, but when you're outside, and well, let's just do two outsides. Here's you. Who wants to be in the picture? Me. We'll spell hot like this and cold. On a hot day, who said me? Dylan. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Basically, if it's, if it's hot outside, right, there's more thermal energy out here. I'm just going to draw that as a lot more and it's faster little dots than out here, right? It's snowy. And so in this case, when it's hot, that is hotter than human body temperature, thermal energy is flowing from the outside environment, on average, to all parts of Dylan, right? And that makes him feel like he's warm. The, the reverse happens, because he's, he's warmer in this case, thermal energy is flowing out of him into the environment, which makes him feel cold. cold. So is the Okay. Um, so, speaking of hot and cold, if, if we were to draw this, just thinking about what our little definition of thermal energy here. Uh, what would a hot object, if we looked at the particles in a hot object, <laughs> yeah, sure, maybe the sun, but it doesn't matter what the object is, but in a hot, so hot object, they should be moving how? <laughs> both faster and... Slower. No, not both faster and slower, but faster and... Faster. Well, okay, we'll, just, we'll start with faster for now. They're definitely moving faster. Right? The kinetic energy is greater. The kinetic energy is greater greater ke. The kinetic energy is greater the faster they're moving. I'm going to label this hot. Oh, in any This direction. one's cool. This one's going to have... And then also, how can we increase the potential energy of these particles? Uh, Make them what? How well... Thinking about so thinking about gravitational potential energy, what has more gravitational potential energy? Something near Earth's sur surface or something far away from Earth's surface? Let's all answer it the correctly. Let's all answer it correctly. What? What has more potential energy? Something high up or close to the ground? High up. So further from Earth's surface, right? So the further the particles are apart, the more potential energy they have. In since. Thermal energy is both kinetic and potential energy. It should have both greater, I should just abbreviate this K, and greater U. So they should be both farther apart and moving faster. Whereas in this one, they should be both moving slower and what? Closer together. So a lower K and a lower U. That means I should really have more dots. I, the reason you might have been telling yourself, this one's got more potential energy, but that's not right. It has less potential energy. It's just that I was too lazy to draw all these dots in here. So there we go. That's a little better, huh? OK, so we can even think of thermal energy. We, we had, for a macro scale object, for an object that we can interact with in our daily lives, what did we call the sum of potential and kinetic energy? Let's say it a little louder. Mechanical. Mechanical energy. We can think of thermal energy as the sum of kinetic and potential energy for Particles. You might write that down. Thermal energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energy for particles. And once again, always bear in mind that just like we have in the temperature definition, not all of them are moving the same speed in either case. And not all of them are the same distance apart in either case, right? So, so 
on average, they're moving faster and farther apart here and slower and closer together here. What happens if they get so, so, so close together? Like, uh, think about the water bottle, right? The water bottle over there. If they get slow enough and close enough together, what's going to happen? It freezes. Yeah, it becomes a solid. It becomes a solid. Oh, it's freezing. It, it becomes a solid, right? If they get slow enough and close enough together, that's not all that's happening. We'll talk more about what's happening in later so, chapters. So but what about I'm sorry. Right, so, okay, so nitrogen normally is what? Liquid. No. What's gas? Gas, gas. right? You're breathing in 78% of what you're breathing right now is nitrogen. It's a gas. Um, and then when it gets cold enough, just like we just said, when it gets cold enough, they get close enough together and they slow down enough that they basically they can form bonds between different molecules of nitrogen and that causes it to be a liquid. But, but we'll talk more about that in the further the chapter. So hold your thoughts until then. Okay. So, um, we're going to talk about two more things here, but first let's, uh, in fact, we're going to talk about one more thing, and then a math thing, and then a third thing, or a second concept, or a third thing. But first got to erase all this. So the next thing I want you to write down, and I'll write this down in a second when I'm done erasing this, is specific heat. So write down specific heat. And you probably, hopefully, do you remember that from last year? Did we talk about this last year? Uh, maybe the coronavirus made it so we couldn't. Did, did we, Lily, did we talk about specific heat last year? Okay, I don't think so either. Um, so specific heat, and you can put in parentheses after specific heat, capital C. We measure, wait, hold on, it might be lower heat. It's capital C, that was right. Um, you can label it specific heat, and then the abbreviation for that is C. But specific heat is defined in science as the amount of energy, the amount of heat energy in joules it takes to raise one, sorry, raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin, doesn't matter. But this is specific heat. Specific heat, which is abbreviated capital C. Specific heat is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature, tem let's spell it right though, temperature, that's an ugly word, I'm going to try it again. Someone earlier was mocking me for pronouncing the word temperature weird, but that's what I do so I can spell it right, temperature. The amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of substance by one degree Celsius. I'm going to put the parentheses, or one Kelvin. We'll talk more about the Kelvin. Please don't make that noise. Put your mask on. Um, we're going to talk about more about the uh, units of Kelvin and degrees Celsius in a further chapter, but for now this is adequate. We measure specific heat in, well, we'll talk about that in a second, too. Um, but basically, using our definition here, if a substance had a high specific heat, what, what's going to be true for it? Not always. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have what? We'll read through this. It's the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of substance by one degree Celsius. So imagine we have one kilogram of two different substances, and we're going to try to raise the temperature of each by one degree Celsius. Which one would take more energy? Something with a high specific heat or something with a low specific heat? Low. High specific heat. Because let's think about the definition. If, if, if this is the amount of energy required to raise it, then if the amount of energy goes up, then that raises a specific heat, too. So basically, you can think of it kind of like inertia. It's kind of like heat inertia. It's, it's how hard it is, how much energy it requires to change the temperature of a substance. It's almost like inertia, right? Obviously, keep those things separate in your brain, but it's almost like inertia. It's how hard it is, how much energy it requires to change the temperature of a substance in either direction, right? We define it as the amount to raise it by one degree Celsius, but it, it works the same way in either direction. Stuff that has a high specific heat resists, write this down, this is very important, and this will be a, a clearer definition for you. Objects, or let's say substances, because we only do this for pure substances. Substances with a high specific heat resist a change in their temperature. Substances with a high specific heat resist a change in their temperature, either direction. So let me tell you, water's got a high specific heat. 
Water has a high specific heat. You could write that down. What, what, what might have a low specific heat? What might be something that changes its temperature a easily? A rock would have a lower specific heat than water for sure. What else? Metal. Metal. Plastic. Metal. In fact, that's the two examples your book gives. And it, it provides a reason for this. Why does water have a high specific heat? Basically, because between the water molecules, there are bonds. And be before the particles can start to move faster, right? That, that would be increasing the temperature, wouldn't it? If the particles are going to be moving faster, that increases the temperature. So before the temperature can increase, those bonds have to be broken. So effectively, the stronger the bonds are between the molecules, or particles or atoms or whatever, the stronger the bonds are, the higher the specific heat. Because they have to, the, the energy has to go to breaking the bonds before it can go to making the particles move faster. So look with me. You can't on YouTube, but you can probably look up a picture of this. But look with me at the picture on 161. It says it has a picture of water molecules on the left and a picture of metal atoms on the right. And it says when heat is added for the water molecules, when heat is added, some of the added heat has to break some of these bonds before the molecules can start moving faster. Once again, what does molecules start moving faster? What do we call that? Heat. Yeah, it, well, it's an increase in what? Thermal energy. Thermal energy, or temperature, or heat. And then in the, in the metal drawing, it says, in metals, electrons can move freely. When heat is added, no strong bonds have to be broken before the electrons can start moving faster. The higher the specific heat, the harder it is to change the temperature of that substance. So which would make a better coolant. A coolant's job is to keep an engine or some other device cool. Water. Yeah, water. Uh, who, who does the computer thing? Who's got some nice computers? No one? Carter's got a nice computer. What, what are the nicest computers cooled with? Do they have fans to cool them with air? They have water. Water coolers, water right? The nicest PCs in the middle of bath water. Gross. Yeah. I assume that's a female and I, that is gross. Um, <laughs> let's not talk about that anymore, but, but basically, in the same way that a car engine is cooled by a mixture of water and antifreeze. Um, there is such a thing as an air aspirated engine, right? Engines that are cooled with just the air blowing over them and they're less efficient. They're less efficient because air has a lower specific heat than water does. Do the thing okay. that tells me that you know what I'm talking about. Um, so what's the use of having water in there? Because if one of them, like one of those itty bitty little tubes breaks, your PC shot. Right. Know? Well, d don't break it. In fact, don't. If you're gonna think about breaking a computer, just don't do it. Yeah, so um, let's talk about the thing. We're gonna do talk about the math, the math last. But this can be, this can be used to measure. You, you maybe someday in your life. In fact, I've seen a TikTok video about this. But you maybe someday in your life wondered. If you look at the back of a Tootsie Rolls or potato chips or whipped cream, it says how many calories the thing has, right? You, you're all aware of this measurement. And some, we know that the more calories something has, what? What are some things that are true the more calories something has? The more fat. Not necessarily more fat, but what? Yeah, the more energy. Calories are a measure of energy. Let's write that down. Calories are a measure of energy. So you might look at the back of Twinkies and find Twinkies have got 250 calories. Um, and that seems like a lot, right? That's going to go over my limit of calories and I'm going to get fat. But if you're starving to death, like if you're in the middle of the Sahara Desert and you're starving, you really want something with more calories. Our bodies are designed to use calories. Like the calories is just a way of measuring the energy that food provides. So how do they do that? They, they, they make someone eat it and they measure how much energy they have. That sounds really complicated. Here's, as it turns out, What's really cool is that your body is effectively just, like you, you've heard as a metaphor, that your body burns fuel. Like Mr. Berry might tell you, oh, the, your body burns fuel, so you need to eat right before you play your game or whatever, right? But what's really cool is that your body, there's a lot more steps than when you just like eat a, tw a Twinkie into the fire, but effectively it's the exact same thing. The, uh, the air you breathe combined with the sugars in your food to give you energy. That's, it's effectively the exact same thing. There's a lot more steps when it goes in your body but effectively it's just burning it. So what they do is they make this thing called a bomb calorimeter. Bomb calorimeter, which is a, that's a kind of cool name for a band. But there's a bomb calorimeter and it's basically like a two walled flask. There's a flask within another flask and it's got a lid. And they put a thermometer in that. So this little thingy? Yeah, that little thingy. They put a, a thermometer in that. Um, and they usually, in the, the best ones, they just pump pure oxygen gas into here. And then they put their, the food, a 
Twinkie in our case, right? Because that's easy to draw. And then they start on fire. And while the Twinkie burns, it heats up water in this outside thing, and they measure the change in temperature of the water. And if the Twinkie has a lot of calories, which it does, versus a piece of broccoli, the water will get warmer by the time it's done burning. We do this lab with calorimeters in advanced chemistry. So if it's something you want to do to burn all the food, in fact, I always tell the kids, like, someone brings Doritos, someone brings Cheetos, someone brings Lay's potato chips, and we burn them. And then we measure how much heat is generated from that burning. It, it turns out to be the exact same, or if, if even not the exact same, it's a good correlation to how much energy your body can derive from that food. So higher calorie foods give you more energy, but if you eat a million higher calorie foods a day and your body doesn't use all that energy, <laughs> obesity. Okay, so questions about calorimetry? This, this process is called calorimetry, to measure calories. Let's, let's now let's talk about how that is done. So here's the math we do with it, ready? Here's the math, ready? Q, what's Q stand for? Lots of things, but what's Q stand for in, thermal, in thermodynamics, you remember? Heat. Q is heat energy. Q equals MC delta T. Delta, is that a triangle? Yep. So it's, I don't know what C means, but it's something change in temperature. Yeah, 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 good, good, Ellie. So um, you do know what C is, because it's even on the board. Oh, then it's specific heat. Okay, can you guess what the M is? There you go. So we've got them all. You don't talk anymore. Ready? So Q is heat. How would we measure how would we measure heat? In what units? Uh, Celsius. Shh, no. Fahrenheit? Nope. Heat is a type of energy. Thermal oh, energy. Joules. M is mass. How do we measure mass generally in science? Uh no, try again. Kilograms. Kilograms. Shh. Okay, hey. Be quiet, please. Stop moving around so much. Just be quiet. Okay, shh. Capital C is what? Specific heat. Specific heat. And you, we didn't write down the unit earlier, but the specific heat, uh, the unit for specific heat is joule per kilogram Kelvin or kilogram degree Celsius. Joule per kilogram Kelvin or kilogram degree Celsius. It doesn't make any difference. Um, and then delta T is what? Change in, shh, please be quiet, temperature. And temperature can be measured in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. It depends on, or, okay. So all we have to do, if, if we're trying to find the heat, we just, we just put in everything else and multiply them to solve. If we're trying to solve anything else, what's nice about this equation is that since it's all, as it's written, multiplicative, since it's all multiplicative, we can just divide anything we don't want from this side to the other side. So for instance, if we're trying to solve for the mass, we would just do Q equals, or sorry, Q over C delta T equals N. It's a really easy equation to manipulate. Do you have questions about this equation? We'll do a couple of examples, um, but we'll do them after I turn the video off. And do you have questions about specific heat? No. Do you have questions about temperature, thermal energy, no. or heat? Okay. Bye.